Hi there, this is Jane and in this video we're going to have a look at some tips for the Rock School Grade 3 guitar piece Fallout and this is from the 2012 to 2018 syllabus. The first thing we need to do is get our tone right. So if you look at the walkthrough which is just after the piece in the book it shows you how to set your amp up. So make sure you're on your distortion channel, you've got that gain nice and high and you also just boost those mids just a little bit just to help it cut through the mix. Get a nice heavily overdriven sound there. And also, stick it on the bridge pickup. It makes it just gives you that extra little bit of an edge. Um, if you've got a humbucker there, even better. So once we've got our tone sorted, we need to start looking at the tune. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rhythm from the first two bars of the tune to get us started. Now all the way through the tune, we've got lots of semi quaver rhythms going on here. So if we just could take those first two bars to help us analyse the rhythm, you can use these techniques then to go through the rest of the tune if you're having problems with any rhythms further on. Okay, now like I've said, there's lots of semi-quavers going on in this. So the best thing to start off with, I think, is just have a look at some semi-quavers, see if we can play them nice and smoothly. So here is a bar um, popping up on the screen for you now, full of semi-quavers. Okay, a semi-quaver is worth a quarter of a beat. Okay, so we've got four of them grouped together, that is one beat. And you can see there's four lots of these groups here. So that's four beats, each with four notes in them. So we have a potential for 16 notes in this bar. For that reason, they're also called 16th notes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this bar full of semi-quavers and show you how we count it, make sure I'm keeping the rhythm nice and even just to give you something to practice along with. So this is our bar of semi-quavers. Sounds like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So if you can get used to playing these semi-quavers nice and evenly, doing it along with a metronome, keeping it nice and slow, making sure you, you put in four even notes inside each beat. Now once you've got used to that we can start looking at the actual rhythm for these first two bars. Now there's lots of semi-quavers, quavers, even some dotted quavers going on in here and some tied notes. It's quite a complicated rhythm. So let's break it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the tied notes out completely and just have a look at the rhythm, not any of the notes themselves because it's power chords and it's not even going to look at the power chords yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop up on the screen for you um, a diagram of the first two bars, just the rhythm, but without any tied notes put in. Okay, so here it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to count out loud all of the semi-quavers and just strum on the actual notes that are actually in these first two bars. Take it nice and slow so you've got an idea what this rhythm sounds like and it'll help us to build it up. So this is these first two bars without any tied notes in them. This is what it sounds like. One, E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and So if you can play that over and over, nice and steadily, just to get used to the rhythm, keeping it slow, so you can get that rhythm in your head, it will make it easier. Then what we have to do is add the tied notes in. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, because the note after the tie, you don't play. You let the first note ring on that little bit longer. Okay, so it does, it complicates things a little bit. So once we've got used to that first um, rhythm, we can try the rhythm with these tied notes in. So I'm gonna pop that up on the screen for you now. So this is the actual rhythm for the first two bars of the tune. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, again, I'm gonna say all my semiquavers out loud, but I'm gonna play the rhythm as it's written, just strumming, no power chords yet. Okay, so this is what it sounds like. Here we go. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. So that's quite a complicated rhythm there. But once you get used to it, it will make it a lot easier. And then when you can play that rhythm, you'll be able to apply your power chords to that rhythm. Again, keep it nice and slow, and if you need to, play it along with a metronome. It'll help keep you in time, okay? So the next thing we need to look at is the actual power chords themselves. Now, there's some pull-offs going on here, and there's some slides. There's some quite long slides up and down the neck, okay? Now, these um, pull-offs, the best thing to do is just to bar your first finger for the power chord. Normally, you'd keep your fingers on the tips, but that first finger, if you bar it, to make sure when you pull your third finger off, 
it's pulling it off straight to that note. It will make it easier. So then let's have a look at the slides. There's a huge slide going down from an E power chord all the way down to a B. So that's from the seventh fret all the way down to the second fret. Okay, so I will practice separately. See, I missed it then. That slide. Okay, in fact, I will practice sliding these power chords up and down all over the neck. Because as you get further, closer towards the nut, the frets spread out. And as you come closer up here towards the body of your guitar, the frets get closer together. So you've got to compensate slightly with your fingers as you're sliding up and down. So it doesn't matter, to be honest, where you're sliding. You can slide anywhere up and down the neck with these two note power chords just to get used to sliding around and keep it nice and clean. Okay, so once you've got used to that, you can have a go at the rhythm for that first section. Okay, then you can apply that to the rest of the section as well. You've got a nice power chord riff going on there. Don't forget your palm mutes. Always check in the tune to make sure you know where your palm mutes are and make sure these palm mutes are nice and chunky, keeping the side of your palm pretty much on top of the bridge, just half on top of the bridge and just half on the strings. Give yourself a nice chunky tone going on there. Okay, so that's your first section, section A. Um, section B, again, has lots of um, semi-quavers in, so if you're struggling with these rhythms, ignore the notes to start off with and just try strumming the notes and counting them out loud using the metronome to help you get those rhythms. Now, we're up in fifth position for this. So the first note in this section is the seventh fret. So I will use your third finger for the seventh fret, your second finger for the sixth fret, and your first finger for the fifth fret. Now we do pop down to the third fret occasionally. I will just move your first finger down for that because you've got an open note before it. It's quite a tricky little um, melody going on here with these open notes. So if you take it nice and slowly, Okay, and also when you get down to that three, just a tiny quarter bend. So just pull the string down ever so slightly. And then you've got a nice little riff there. Make sure you're keeping those notes nice and muted. Okay, so just watch carefully for that rhythm and also those tiny little quarter bends going on. And then we go straight to section C, which is your solo. Now for this tune, we're in the key of E minor. It tells us this at the beginning we have an F sharp in the key signature, okay, and the tune does sound very minor. So we're going to use for this a solo E minor pentatonic, E minor blues, uh, or the full E natural minor scale will do. Um, you can play it wherever you want. Um, if you look at the next section, you're going to be back to that seventh fret again in fifth position. So maybe think about where you're heading to in the next section, and that'll help you if you want to stay close to that section so you don't have to jump too far. I think when I did my solo on my YouTube video, I ended up somewhere up here, but it was and it was a big jump to get down back to that fifth position. So just bear that in mind. At this grade, you don't need to do anything complicated, something that's in keeping with the tune. Um, nice, simple rhythms, maybe adding some of those semi-quavers in there, some bends, some quarter bends like we've got in the tune. If you want to pinch some of the rhythms out of the tune as well to throw in, just to help it tie in, that would be great as well. Nothing too complicated. And then in section D, we've got a very similar um, rhythm and riff going on to what we had in section B. But here we've got some tied notes coming in again. So when you're playing around with this rhythm, again, do what we did for the first two bars. Write it out nice and slow. Ignore the ties to start off with. Just strum that rhythm, counting all the semi quavers as you're doing it. And then when you've added those tied notes, try playing the actual riff with the actual notes okay you've got to watch here again um we've got an alternate ending second time through so make sure you jump to bar the alternate ending number two uh, when you do the repeat a lot of people forget that i do on occasion as well um and then what we've got uh, in section e the same riff again but we're just switching it from the sixth string to the fifth string with some more quart little bends coming in as well and we've even got a little pentatonic riff going on there as well. Nothing too complicated. And then when we get back it to the end at section F, it's very similar to the intro riff, okay? But at the end, we have a dodgy little rhythm coming in and we've got some triplets. Okay, triplets, 
can be a little bit of a pain, especially since we've not played them anywhere else in the tune, can confuse you a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop up on the screen the rhythm for the last two bars. Well, not the last two bars, the second to last and the third to last bars of the tune. The first two, the first two bars on the last line of the tune. It's probably the best way to say it. So here it is, popped up on the screen for you now. So I've just written the rhythm out, including there's a little tied note in there, and I've shown these triplets at the end. Now, all the triplet is, is squeezing three notes into the space where you'd normally have two. Okay, so we're going to be squeezing three quavers into the space where we'd normally have two quavers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strum this rhythm to start off with, and I'm actually going to ignore the triplets. I'm just going to play it as quavers to start off with. Okay, and then I'll explain the quavers to you after. So this is the rhythm, but without the triplets at the end, just playing four quavers instead of six quavers that would be triplets. That's what it sounds like. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so that's just with straight quavers. Now, when we actually play the triplets, we're going to be squeezing an extra note into those last two beats, okay, in the second bar. Um, and they have to be nice and even as well. Okay, so we're spreading three notes in there. So we're going to be a little bit quicker than playing just two quavers, but keep it nice and spread out. So I'm going to strum the rhythm as it's actually written now. So this is what it sounds like. One E and a, two E and a, three E and, oh, and a, sorry. I will try that again. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three and a, four and a. Okay, so it's a bit of a tricky rhythm there. So what you can actually do is you can stick a metronome on and you can try playing some triplets. Okay, so they'd sound like this. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So you're squeezing three notes into the space where you'd normally have two. So on two, uh, a few bars of um, normal quavers would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so what you could possibly do is maybe play a couple of bars just with quavers and then a couple of bars straight after just with triplets in and help building it up so you can play them straight after each other. And also when you listen to the tune as well, you can hear that triplet rhythm at the end and also make sure you palm mute those triplet notes while you're doing it. Now, when you're actually practicing the tune, you don't have to practice it in the right order. You can practice any section or any bar in any order you want. If you've got any problem spots, make sure you play those, practice those bits a little bit more than the rest, okay? Or once you can play all the sections separately, try pasting them together. A good idea is to get a program that slows down the actual backing track and play along with that. Now, it's not a very fast tune, it's only 75 beats a minute, this tune, but there are those semi-quavers in there, so you want to slow it down fairly slow to help you squeeze all those notes in. So maybe start at about 60% and gradually build your way up, okay? You can always practice playing your solo a bit separately and then adding that in afterwards. Um, what I tend to do is pull, um, do a loop on the solo section and just keep practicing playing around with uh, my notes in the solo until I've got something that I like the sound of. Um, if I'm playing it slow, make sure that you don't add too many notes because as you speed it up, you be, it'll be too fast for your fingers. Okay. So once you can get everything together nice and steadily at that 60% speed, say, gradually build the, the speed up 2%, 3% at a time, something that you don't hardly notice, and then pretty soon you'll be able to play the whole tune all the way through at full speed. And that is what I would do if I'm practicing fallout for the rock school exams. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like what you see today. Um, there's going to be plenty more videos with tips for all the rock school exams. Um, I also provide lessons via Skype. If you're actually doing an exam when you need some help, contact me. All the details are shown below in the description. Um, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. There are extra lessons available just for people on Facebook and Twitter. Um, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.